Hey, Shalom, Makim Shalom. First and foremost, as always, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rechakwadash. Once again, I want to say, Call Hala Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rechakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us his truth and that's still teaching us his truth. You know, still out here teaching on the highways and byways and doing lessons. All right. And uh, much peace, love, and salutation to the elect of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai that's pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Tazama from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, coming back today with another lesson. And Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. All right, and um, I should be back on my regular page this week, uh, back on Soldier of Yahweh by Yahweh Shai. Uh, like I said uh, in one of my previous lessons, I got a strike on. Uh, I had a strike on one of a video that I did, so I, I haven't been able to post on my channel, so I've just been posting to two other channels. But um today's lesson is gonna be entitled The Holy Spirit Reproves Concerning Three Topics: Sin, Judgment, and Righteousness. Alright, the Holy Spirit, which is the Rachakwadash. That's why we say Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah Bashem Rachakwadash. Alright, which Rachakwadash is the Holy Spirit, reproves or corrects. Concerning three topics Sin Judgment And righteousness Alright now we know that through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Bashem Alright we go out onto the highways and byways And we do these lessons based upon the spirit Of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Placed within us to teach Okay uh, To go into the prophecies Which that's you know That's one of the most important things Uh you know that we're supposed to do as the apostle paul said he said uh covet to prophesy all right so that's one of the most important things as we are to do is to is to prophesy which you know revelation 19 and 10 it says that uh the testimony of yahweh is the spirit of prophecy okay so if you have a camp all right that's not going into uh you know current events of what's going on in the world right now and linking it up with the scriptures as we are to do you know then it's, it's most likely that it's most likely that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is not dealing with that particular camp. All right, one of the main prophecies to come to pass is the the mandatory implementation of the you know of the Haragma. All right, which a lot of camps scoff and uh, you know mock at, but if you if you have the Rachakwadash dealing with you, you clearly know that it's the it's the CHIP, it's the CHIP. All right. But it's all through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai at the end of the day that we are who we are and, 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 and we know what we know through the spirit. It's not of us. Okay. Now, uh, the inspiration of this lesson comes by way of a, of a saying that Yahweh Shai said here in John, the 16th chapter, which we're going to read here. All right. This is the book of John, chapter 16. And uh, we're going to start at verse five. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking, of course, because the words are written here in red. All right. Yahweh Shai said, he said. But now I go my way to him that sent me. All right. This is him talking about going back to Yahweh. All right. He was going to be put in the cross. He was going to go through uh, his passion. All right. And he was going to be put on the cross. He was going to die. All right. And, and according to prophecy, he was going to be resurrected on the third day. All right. And then he was going to ascend back up to Yahweh, which he's he's back in his rightful position right now as we speak. All right, says, but now I will go my way to him that sent me. All right. It says, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? Right. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. You see, because uh, the, the Lord let them know, like, look, I'm not going to be here with y'all. You see, and he was he was going to leave for a little while. But, you know, when you read. Matthew, the 28th chapter, Yahweh Shai let them know. He said, but lo, look, I'm going to be with you until the ends of the world. You see, so grief or sorrow hey, and grief and sorrow has filled us, you know, to a point that like what, like the scripture says, it says that what well, we're vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked because we're longing, you know, we're longing for the redemption. You know, we're longing for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to deliver us, man. You know, we're, we're, we're crying to be delivered from this hell, this captivity. And we know that Yahweh Shai is coming back to save us, you know, as his name means, Yah meaning he, and then Yahweh Shai meaning salvation or deliverer. You know, we know that Yahweh Shai is coming, you know. 
So let's read it again. It says, but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. You see, the Lord said it's expedient. What does that word expedient mean? What does that word expedient mean? This word expedient in the Greek is uh, sumferro. All right. Sumferro. And when you get this definition of sumferro, it's expedient means uh, profitable, right? So it says, it says with a reference to the subject to bear together or at the same time to carry with others. It says uh, to collect or contribute in order to help. You see, to collect or contribute in order to help. Hence, to help, be profitable, be expedient. So the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is literally saying that it's profitable. It's going to be profitable. It's profitable for him to go away. It's going to be profitable for us. And what made it profitable that Yahweh Shai, all right, went away? To, and ascend it back up to the Father. Uh, when you read Revel Revelation, the fifth chapter, this, the seals was loosed, and the Holy Spirit was poured down on high, as Yahweh Shai promised. He said, "He said, look, y'all are going to tarry, tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes down." You see, and the, and the seals being loosed. Now, this, the, the 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 seals being loosed. All right, for these prophecies to be understood, you know, uh, understood. I rather say today happened when what when you read revelation the 11th chapter it says after three years and a half after excuse me after three days and a half the spirit of the most high the spirit of yahweh bashim al shai entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them that that seen them which is happening right now as we speak so it was expedient for yahweh shai to go back up to the father so that what he could he could pour down the spirit the, the seals could be loosed and he can give the spirit unto us which is the gifts as it tells you in Ephesians, the second chapter, you see, it says it is expedient, profitable. You see, so that's what that's what expedient means. It means when and then when something is profitable to you, that means that you can use it. Right. It says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. All right. And what is the comforter? All right. The comforter is the Holy Spirit. OK, the comforter is Yahweh Shai. It's the spirit that guides us to all understanding within these scriptures, which the world cannot receive. You know, the world, you know, millions upon millions and billions of people have Bibles. But just because they have a physical Bible in the hand in their hand doesn't mean that they have the comfort of dealing with them or the spirit dealing with them. All right. To be able to understand what's truly written within these scriptures. All right. The comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. All right, gives us the influence to understand and know what the Bible's talking about. The Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit gives us uh, divine strength from on high. It gives us our ability to go out there in the highways and byways, in season, out of season, to teach. You know, to undergo afflictions, to undergo tribulations. You know, temptations. That it's all through the Spirit, right? So, let's read this again. It says, "For if I will not go, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you." But if I depart, I will send him unto you. you. See that? He said, look, I'm going to send the comforter unto you, man. Which he did do. Right? Now we're going to read through this. It says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So it says that he's going to reprove the world. Okay, reprove. What does that word reprove mean? Okay, does not the scripture say reprove, rebuke? Uh, exhort with all long suffering. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> that word reprove is elen elenco elenco. Excuse me. All right, elenco. So I can say okay. Here it is. All right, so so that word reprove here it says to convict, refute. All right, confute. So you know when so, you know when you convict somebody or when somebody is convicted of a crime, they're sentenced. So let's just get that definition of convict. Well, you know what, Salaki, not me, not meaning sentenced, but let's just get the definition. All right, it says uh, a convict is is a person found guilty of a crime. Okay, no, I was right, Salaki. I was 
double guessing myself. It says a convict and a person found guilty of a crime is sentenced by a court or a person serving a, a sentence in prison. And what are we uh, are we not convicting the world of, of, of its unrighteousness ran by Esau? And is there not a great sentencing? <laughs> All right. Is not Esau found guilty? Is not two thirds of our people found guilty? Right. And, and what's going to happen? A great judgment is, uh, judgment is on the way. Which is going to be sent by Yahweh by Shema and they're going to be convicted. You see, that's why the scripture says in 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, let me, let me pull this real quick. 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, I want to say it's like starting at verse 19, let me see real quick. Yep, let's start at verse uh, 18, it says, it says, and it said, behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh. And to visit them that dwell upon the earth. And this is Yahweh Bashem Shai visiting the world which he made. All right, he's visiting the world which he made by way of signs, all right, by way of judgments. You have uh, the, the, the wicked being exposed, all right, you have the light exposed in all darkness, right? As the scripture says, uh, and then, you know, lining up, lining that up with 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter, right? Verse 19. It says, and when, it says, and when, excuse me. It says, and will begin to make inquisition of them. And an inquisition is an investigation when you get that word. It, mean, it literally means to investigate something. And the investigation is being made by Yahweh Bashem Shai by way of his prophets. You know, us doing these videos and the, and the, and the, and the Holy Spirit, the Rechach Kodash dealing with us, to be able to expose the darkness with the light. Figuring out who, to, knowing who the wicked is, man, knowing who our enemies are, knowing, knowing their schemes and their plans and devices through the scriptures, man, that's been given unto us to know, right? It says, and we'll begin to make inquisition of them, what they be that have hurt them, uh, excuse me, what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness, right? That have hurt unjust, who has hurt, who has hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness? Esau. Have it getting unjust gains, you know? Using a sword, using all kinds of deceit, guile, and wickedness to rule the planet Earth. That's talking about Esau. What they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. Is not the affliction of Zion being fulfilled in these last days? Absolutely it is. Lamentations four, Lamentations of fourth chapter, the last couple verses tell you that. That the cup's going to pass unto Esau because what? Our, our, our captivity has been fulfilled. In this, in this world, being Esau's world, is, is vanishing away. And a new world is coming, which is going to be a world, the world of Jacob. Okay? So that's what the word convict means. It says, declare someone to be, to be guilty of a criminal offense by the verdict of a jury or the decision of a judge in the court of law. The prophets will be considered the jury and the, and the, and the judge is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, the jury being the, uh, the prophets, the angels. You know, but the main judge being Yahweh through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. And hey, Yahweh Shai even said himself, he said, my father hath committed all judgment into my hands. All shall stand in the, before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. So it says to convict, refute. Let's get that definition real quick. We'll see what, we'll see what refute means. All right, refute means to prove a statement or theory to be wrong or false. And does not the scripture say that, uh, that we're breaking down strongholds? And every imagination and every imagination and thing that exalted itself pretty much against Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, we break these we break those strongholds down using the scriptures, the Holy Spirit, to confute. What's confute mean? Disprove all these different lies, man, all these different ways of life that that that, that the world has been ran by. We're disproving it with the scriptures. Right? Prove a person or an assertion to be wrong. You see, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. Right. And we're proven through the, through the Holy Spirit to prove the rulers of this world to be wrong. The wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Right. So let's read this again. It says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. What is sin? Transgression of the law. And this in this world is being ran by sin. You know, the man of sin is ruling the world. They call him, it's, it, the scriptures call him the man of sin for a reason. Of And of righteousness, right? 
And what's the right what's what's the righteousness coming by way of? All right, the teachings. That word righteousness is Daika you said uh Daika Yasone. Daika Yasone. Excuse me, that's uh John 16 and 8. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm, you know, I'm just getting some words here, because that's eight. You know, you gotta get these words to understand in their context what, what's being what you know what's being said. It says, when used of the Most High, His Holiness, right? The holiness of Yahweh Bashem al Shah denotes His perfect moral purity, integrity, sinlessness, and that's what we're and, and, and that's what we're telling our people is to what repent, turn back to Yahweh Bashem al Shah and be holy, be separate, right? And of judgment, the coming judgment, right? The judgment that's 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 gonna that's gonna be commenced by Yahweh Shai. The fact that Babylon the Great is gonna be destroyed. The judgment coming to two thirds of our people. The judgment coming to Esau. The judgment coming to these different nations. You see, World War Three. All these different things, man. You see, it says, <clears throat> excuse me. It says of sin, because they believe not on me. You see, and it's a sin not to believe. It's a sin not to believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. If you're an Israelite, if you don't believe upon Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, that's literally sin, <laughs> right? That word sin is hamar hamar hamartia. Okay, hamartia. Um. Okay, and that word sin here, it says to be without sharing, to miss the mark, to err, be mistaken. To wander from the law of the Most High. You see, that's what sin is. Violate the Most High's law. It tells you right here in the definition. That's what sin is. To do wrong. You see, an offense. All right. So it says, back in verse 9, it says of sin because they believe not on me. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. And the, it's talking about the world of Israel, by the way. It ain't talking about the whole entire world. Okay, let's get John chapter 3, uh, verse 18. All right. John chapter three, verse 18. It says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But believeth on who? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. See that? Because it wasn't ultimately, it, ultimately it wasn't meant for you to believe at the end of the day. So you're already condemned. You're not. You're not one of those that was written in the Lamb's book, in the in the in the in the Lamb's book of life, which we hope to be written in the Lamb's in the Lamb's book of life, man. Okay. It says, "But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High." You see, those that tell you that the names of the Lord, the names of Yahweh, and the names of Yahweh Shai don't matter. You can call them whatever you want. Those individuals that say that. Hey, you better take heed upon those individuals, man. You see that? You be, you better you better take heed because there's a lot that comes with the name of the Lord, man. It comes with the reputation. It comes with the way. You see? Any camp that's calling on Jesus Christ, you know, and, and, and saying that the name of the Lord don't matter and all this other kind of stuff. The prophecies are, are gay. All, all different kinds of madness, man. You got you better take heed. You see, so you it says you condemned already. You see, so a lot of a lot of Jake, a lot of Jake is condemned. You know, two thir two thirds of our people are already condemned. When you really just want to be technical, they're gonna have to come back on on the other side, right? This is John chapter six, verse twenty nine. It says, Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, This is the work of the Most High. Right? This is now this is this is the work of the Lord, which the work of the Lord. Us going out there on the highways and byways shows our faith. Keep that in mind. Faith. That's the key word is faith. Right? This is the work of the Most High. That ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Because Yahweh testified of Yahweh Shah himself. This is this is out of the words of Yahweh Shah. This is out of his mouth. This is the work of the Most High that you believe on, on, on me is pretty much what he's saying. Right? Let's read this in the NLT. Yahweh Shah told them. This is the only work the Most High wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. 
and you show forth your belief in Yahweh Shah by your actions, by your faith. Which that faith goes by way of what? It, it, it's an action word. Your faith is an action word too. Okay? And the, and the majority of the world, the majority of the world isn't going to show that they believe in Yahweh Shah by, by way of their actions. It's just, it's just the truth. Okay? So it says of sin because they believe not on me. Right? It says of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more because we're we're pretty much representatives of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh on the planet earth just as John the Baptist was a herald ushering in uh, uh Yahweh Shai is coming hey we're we're heralds too you see so as as Yahweh Shai physically is not walking the planet earth physically in spirit he is here with us that's why it says of righteousness because I go to my father and what happened when he went, went to the father the spirit got poured down and ye see me no more so just because Yahweh Shah physically isn't here doesn't mean that he's not here. And the world is being reproved of righteousness, which is of him. You see verse 11, it says of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Who's the prince of this world? The prince of this world is talking about Esau. OK, Esau, the, 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 this is the condemnation of his world. You see, let's get this word prince here. This word prince is Arhon. Okay, Arhon. It says the ruler of the irreligious mass of mankind. Who's the ruler of the irreligious mass of mankind? Esau. He's the ruler of this world right now. The earth was given to the hands of the wicked. It says the ruler of the irreligious mass of mankind, man. Irreligious. What's, what's that word irreligious mean? It says irreligion or or, or non-religion is the absence or rejection of religion. Now, religion is not a bad word. OK, religion literally just means worship. All right. What you put your worship. Wh what do you worship? You see. It says absence or rejection of religion, which the religion that we worship is the religion of the law, such as the commandments that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah gave to us. That's our religion. That's our heritage. Right. Or indifference to it. And the majority, the mass majority of Israelites is 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 indifferent to our to their nationality and to their heritage. That's why you tell somebody to stop eating pork, you know, stop committing adultery, stop being mold. You say all these different things and they look at you like as if you're crazy and they turn their nose up at you. As if it's something that's 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 foreign to them. You see, because of that, it hasn't been given to them. And who pushes this 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 way of life? Is uh is Esau, man? That's why the scripture says that. Uh, uh, uh matter of fact, let me uh, let me get that real quick. What's that? Second Corinthians four, or First Corinthians four. Yep. Uh, Second Corinthians four and one. It says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, right? As we have received mercy, we faint not because it's mercy that we even have this uh this understanding. You see that he's even. He's even called us to even know what we know, right? It says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, which is the ways of this world, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of the most high deceitfully, as you have some individuals do, right? It says, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the most high. See that? By manifestation of the truth that was delivered unto us, it says... Uh, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the most high you know pretty much walking honestly but if our gospel be hid right it is hid to them that are lost those that are already set to be destroyed man if our gospel's hid right which is that means that the majority the mass majority is not going to understand it it is hid to them that are lost those who are going to be already set for destruction in whom the god of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not you see so they're already blinded to not get it you know because you do got the spiritual demon satan that works through the minds of these people you got the spiritual demon satan that works through the minds and, and, and sitting at the right hand of esau <laughs> right it says least the light of the glorious gospel of yahweh shai who is the image of the most high should shine unto them you see so the God of this world is talking about Esau. He, he's the ruler of this world. The prince of the power of the air. You see? So let's go back. 
to John 16 and 11 and read that again. It says of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. As a matter of fact, that leads me to another precept. Hold on one second. This is John chapter 12, verse 31. Let's start at verse uh, 30. Yahweh Shai answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. You see, he said it didn't come from me. So that what is so that they could they could, they could bear witness that, that 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 voice that came was the voice of the heavenly father. So that they can bear witness that not just it didn't come for him for Yahweh Shai it came so that what they can understand and know that Yahweh Shai is the one that Yahweh is, is sent. You see, that's why I say Yahweh Shai answered and said, "This voice came not because of me, but be uh, but for your sakes." Now is the judgment of this world. You see, what world? That age. Let's get that word world. Slaki. That word is cosmos. Okay, and that word cosmos, it, it goes into a collective group, not the whole entire world, because that word world, cosmos is like a collective group. Okay, then you got I, eon, or eon, which is like an age. Then you got oikonomini, right, which is uh pretty much the whole entire world. You see, so he said, now is the judgment of this world. In John twelve and thirty one. It says, i.e., you see that, i.e., the devil, which Satan runs this, this portion of this world. It was given unto him. You see? Now is the judgment of this world, the Satan's world. And who is Satan? We already know who Satan is. Right? Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And with the Holy Spirit, with the Rechakwadash, Satan is being casted out. Excuse me, with the truth being preached today. As it tells you in 2 Thessalonians 2, it says, Whom the Lord shall destroy with the spirit of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. <laughs> you see that? That's why it's so important to, to go out there and to, and to go into these prophecies and to teach, man. And teaching is a very vital important uh job for us man why do you think the apostles and, uh, and they're, they're so adamant about us teaching through the spirit and it's not just the apostles it's the spirit of yahweh bashim i was shot jumping on us to do it <laughs> you know we'll get a few more and i'm gonna wrap it up because the point's pretty much been made all right this is luke chapter 10 verse uh so like it. yeah luke chapter 10 verse 18 it says and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Okay, because Satan is not talking about the spiritual demon. Satan was warned with the heavenly father in the, in the heavens. You know what I'm saying? And then the heavenly father grabbed him by the neck and threw him down. And he was, you know, lightning strike. He was falling so fast and he got thrown into the ground. That's what Satan, that, or, uh, that's what uh, Christianity, you know, Satananity. <laughs> that's what Christianity would teach you. You know, that, that, that Satan was fighting against the Heavenly Father and then some angels, you know, rebelled with him and teamed up with Satan and the Heavenly Father threw him out of heaven. No, Satan falling from lightning is talking about Esau's kingdom falling and his, and his kingdom falling fast. With his word going out, man. Why do you think that, you think that the scriptures say that, uh, that he's going to come down with great wrath because he knows he has but a short time? It's because the Lord is going to drop his kingdom, you know? We just read it in John 12 and 31. It says, now is the judgment of this world. And the prince of this world is going to be cast out. And that word prince, I mean, you got it as Archon, which is the the, ir, the ruler of the irreligious mass of mankind. Okay? This is Luke chapter 8, verse 17. All right? It says, for nothing is, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. There's no hiding anything from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh And that's how, the, that's how the rulers of this world hid. All right, the rulers of this world, world hid by way of uh, secrecy and darkness, you know, lies. Okay, and they ran the world by, by, by lies and darkness. That's how they ruled and operate. You see, when the, when, the, when the mass majority doesn't know what the hell is going on, you know, they, they can rule with that. And, push everything, and they can push anything out to be so-called truth. So it says, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid right that shall not that shall not 
be known and come abroad, you see? So there's not nothing that you can hide from the Lord that the Lord is not going to make manifest because the light the light will, will will show forth anything. You see that? And the light that's being preached is this word, man. The scripture says that uh, uh pretty much that the Lord hath made us to be lights in the in the world. It also says in John 3 that what men love men uh would rather be in darkness but they they didn't want to come to light. At least their deeds should be reproved. That's that word reproved again. You see? Let's get Job 24. And uh, let's get. Let's get uh, 12. This is really a whole good chapter, but we'll, we'll just get to the point. All right, Job 24, verse 12. It says. It says men groan from out men groan from out of the city and the soul of the wounded crieth out. Who's the wounded? The soul of the wounded is talking about us. We're the ones who are groaning. You know, we're the ones that that's been wounded, you know, in captivity and slavery. So it says men groan from out of the city and the soul of the wounded crieth out. Yet the most high layeth not folly to them. Pretty much meaning that what the Lord, the Lord uh, pretty much didn't hear our cries for a particular period of time man because what he, he turned his face from us collectively as a nation of people now ultimately the, you know the, the elect are going to get it ultimately at the end of the day but according to prophecy he had to turn his face from us for a little while you see it says yet the most high layeth not layeth not folly to them it says uh so i can make this turn real quick and i gotta pay attention it says uh they are of those they check this out they are of those that rebel against the light that's two-thirds of our people they rebel they're literally at rebellion against yahweh shai because yahweh shai is the light john the first chapter tells you that right they are of those that rebel against the light it says uh they know not the ways thereof nor abide in the past thereof you see, so two thirds of our people are groaning and moaning and complaining. No justice, no peace. Trying to find al alternative ways of righteousness, alternative ways to be, you know, justifiable in the eyes of Esau, in the in the eyes in the ways of this world. You see, you see, they but they're rebelling against the true light. You see, and they don't understand and abide in the past thereof because what it hasn't been given to them to do that. That's why the scripture says that uh, that we're child that, that we gotta walk as children of light, pretty much having this understanding, man. And that all comes by way of the Rakhakwadash, the Holy Spirit being poured upon us, man. All right, so with that, you know, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to the elect of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rakhakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us this truth. And as always, I want to give much peace, love, and salutation to the elect. Of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, pushing this word without truth and sincerity. Shalom, Maki.